today I am really excited. We're gonna go and look for one of probably the most beautiful looking fungus out there. Um, it's a fungus that when you see, you probably don't even realize that it's actually a mushroom. Um, it is a tooth fungus. It grows on trees and it is called the lion's mane or the bear's head. The one that we're going to be looking for today is most commonly referred to as the bear's head. It's the branched version of this tooth fungi and it grows regularly on Douglas firs. So we are in an area that has a lot of Douglas firs, so that's what we're hoping to find. Um, it's said to be somewhat rare, but if you find one, you'll usually find a group of them. So maybe we'll find more than one. Um, but by far one of my most uh, favorite to eat. So that'll be kind of cool. And there are no poisonous lookalikes to this one. So that'll be nice. This is a kind of a, in a sense, a no brainer mushroom uh, for you to try and find. So let's get looking. So as we're walking along through the woods, you want to keep your eyes kind of up looking in the trees because that's where these are going to be growing. But also keep your eyes scanning towards the ground as well. I have found quite a few of these on trees that have fallen and they're growing, you know, kind of almost parallel with the ground. So scanning up and down, up and down, a little bit different than your traditional mushroom hunting when you're just staring straight at the ground. So we gotta keep an eye out, all different places. They are very bright white usually, so hopefully you don't miss them. species of Mycena. Orange ones. <laughs> I forget what their technical name is. Beautiful orange Mycena. It's a half buried chanterelles. It's like they're super excited for the rain to finally get here. And these are white chanterelles. If you're wondering why they aren't the typical kind of golden yellow color that they usually are. Just a slight variation on the species. Just as delicious. Awesome. Always good to fill your basket with something. So now let's uh, get back to that search for our, our lion's mane or our bear's head. See there we've got a red belted conch. Uh, you can see it's got kind of different layers on it. The darkest layer that's furthest back closest to the tree, that's the oldest layer. Then you've got the kind of reddish layer, the reason it's called a red belted conch. Uh, that's kind of the middle aged layer. And then the white layer on the outside, that's the actively growing layer. The underside is all white as well because that is uh, the pore surface there. That's where the spores are coming from, the spore bearing surface. Fun little mushrooms you'll see all over the place. It's a little baby, but it's okay. Look at this little boy. Okay, so I'm not even gonna pick this one. I'll clean off the pine needles though. It's so, so delicate looking. You can see how it's got kind of these little spines on it. I know it's so tiny. Normally they're a little bit larger than that, but this is what the bear's head looks like. Um, kind of hard to describe that to somebody when you're trying to <laughs> explain what this kind of crazy mushroom looks like. But anyways, at least we we're successful, successful in finding one. Some chanterelles, but we're trying to find mine. Man, this, I got picked just a few of them. It's just got like the classic chanterelle look. The, the, the vase and everything. Okay, so we're gonna explore this mushroom right here. There's a chance that it might be a matsutake, but it could also just be something else. Um, 
matsutake season is kind of winding down so i'd be surprised but let's take a look mm. looks promising one thing about these is they're kind of a little fuzzy on the top compared to just a rustula Right, so it's got some a lot of the characteristics. Um, it's got the gills, it's got the veil, it's got the fuzziness. It's kind of got um, a fuzzy stem, stipe, but the true test. You know what the true test is? It's the sniff test. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, you can you can smell it. And you know what? This one it doesn't even look like. Oh, it does have some worms in it. Bummer. Otherwise, I would definitely take it home, cook it up. Oh man, once you smell the smell of a matsutake, you can't forget it. It's so indistinguishable. Like if you're out and you mistake this mushroom for something else, you did not do the sniff taste. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, some people say cinnamon and dirty socks. But uh, my favorite that I've ever heard, it smells like Dirt Spice. Dirt Spice is Old Spice for hippies. Yeah, it's wonderful, delicious smell. And I was not expecting to find one of these today, actually, and uh, it's pretty awesome. And uh, normally when you do find some, if you dig around in the area, you'll find some others as well, but it um, doesn't look like anything else is pushing up at the moment, but pretty cool little find there. Come on, let's have one. Holy cow, and look at that huge chanterelle. <laughs> but we're gonna just ignore that right now because we've got better things going on over here. Oh, yeah. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. This is such a great specimen. Look at this. It's so fun. Oh man, look at those little stains. So the tricky part sometimes is getting them off the tree, but uh, I feel that uh, some photos must be taken first because these things are just so unique and so beautiful looking out here in the woods. And I can never pass out the photo opportunity anyways. So photogenic. So here we go. Some of them can be pretty delicate, so you do have to be careful, which makes it difficult when they're really far up in a tree and you want to get one down. But thankfully, this one moves nicely on the log for us. So let's see. Just kind of try and feel underneath where it might be attached. Do be careful. I have cut myself trying to cut these down before, so just get really close to the log. You can hear that it's got a pretty thick little stem. It's attached to. One cool thing about these is they will return year after year in the same spot. So this is a spot I will most definitely remember and come back to. Ooh, it's got some good weight to it. I know it's been raining, so it's probably kind of some water in it. So one thing we will need to do is we'll need to check this log a little bit more just because sometimes they do seem to cluster themselves. That might be good. Ah! There's a little baby over there. We'll leave that one alone. We'll let that one stay. But uh, proves that you need to definitely take a look around uh, when you find a prize. All right, so let's talk about this guy a little bit. Actually, let me put my knife away so I don't cut myself. Here we are. So, uh, called the bear's head or the lion's 
mane. Um, the one that is traditionally called the lion's mane is a little bit different looking. As you can see, this is the kind of the main stem of the mushroom, the, kind of the core of it. The one that um, is more of a lion's mane style has one main spot of connection and all the little spines just branch off of that one spot. Where this one you can see there's multiple branches and multiple more branches off those branches and all these spines. How do I look? Got a better beard than my husband does now. Almost just as gray though. So um, with these, uh, by far one of my most favorite mushrooms to eat and that really surprised me. When you see something like this you wonder how can it have so much flavor, especially when you see just how delicate it is. Um, but I tell you, people have said it kind of reminds them of crab. It definitely reminds me of crab meat. So think of like some of your favorite ways that you like to have crab and then cook this mushroom up to be something similar. I did a lot of just dry sauteing. You know, this has a lot, a lot of moisture in there and so you don't want to soak these and you want to just try and keep any of the additives that you're going to put um, with the mushroom until the end because you really just want it to saute by itself, let it release its water, and then um, add whatever you would like. Um, I tell you, I had some of this last week and I probably ate a size about this big just to myself in one sitting. <laughs> I don't suggest the first time you try a mushroom to eat that much at once because you never know how your stomach is going to handle it, especially when it's a richer food and especially if you're adding butter to it. The only thing I did is I dry sauteed it and then I added a little butter just as you know it's getting a little stuck to the bottom of the pan to keep it moving. Um, and then it was all browned, the whole entire thing was browned and I added a little more butter at the very end just to kind of give it a coating. Ate it just like that. Oh my gosh, it's like I was just eating like crab dipped in bread butter. It was so delicious. And then towards the end, I did just add a little bit of garlic to just a little small portion of it to see what I got. Wonderful, just a fantastic mushroom. So not only is it something that you can enjoy just because it tastes so good, a ton of research has been do done on this mushroom uh, for all its medicinal um, benefits. Um, one of the big things it's been researched for is to help people with dementia. Um, you know just healing the body in that way and it's just crazy you just I tell you take the time to just look up this mushroom because it's, it's beautiful it's tasty and it could be so beneficial and one thing that's really cool is that people are actually able to cultivate these so people will get logs and inoculate them and have these growing so if this truly is um, what it's looking like to be for the medicine community and for healing uh, people with those kind of diseases then you know we could be growing our medicine on trees it would be pretty amazing. I just wanted to make a point about um, what I was saying about the research being done with this mushroom. Now the the genus of this mushroom is called the heresium so I'm kind of talking about the whole heresium species as a whole and not necessarily just the one that I found today. The studies that they've been doing have been showing actual proof that the nerve growth factor is being stimulated in people who have mild cognitive impairments. So the actual study and the research is showing results for this. It's not just something that they think might be helping. It is actually already being proven to be helping people with those kinds of issues. And so if we've been seeing a little bit of a result, I, I can't even imagine the things that we'll be able to see um, as they research this mushroom even more. So here's my prize for the day. I'm so excited to take this home. Yeah, I'll try not to eat the entire thing all by myself this time. I'll try and share it.